Good morning. Welcome to the Edgewater Lodge. Good morning. How was your foot? Oh, my foot is bad. Vic has been Real limping bad. like an old man that needs a cane. He has like this gnarly blister on the bottom of his foot. But we are at the Edgewater Lodge. Crashed here last night. Right next to the bridge. Super nice place. We are going to pack up the truck and then we're going to get going. You ready? I'm ready. Hoblin, Hoblin Hluvin is ready. Do you even know how to say your own mom's name? No. <laughs> All right. Let's catch some fish. Welcome to the bridge. I'll kind of talk you guys through what we got going on, how Vic and I set up our spread. First rod right here is Torium. We have a pinfish on bottom kind of sitting on a piling straight up and down. It is just following me down. I'll kind of like walk you through the whole spread and show you guys. We're trying to break down the bridge, trying to do it and focus on catching different fish in different ways and just see what's around because every day is a little bit different on the bridge and you never know what is going to be here. On this Abbott, I have a bait that, I mean, I guess I could call a mutton snapper bait. It's a little ballyhoo plug, piece of ballyhoo, and I ca casted that one out far where I think the muttons are going to be. Next, Vic's rod, he's rigged up for casting shrimp on a jig head, just like this one. When you're walking up and down the bridge, there's different little pilings and areas that you can fish. And you just drop the shrimp down, let it sink, see what's going on, maybe you get bit, maybe you don't, and then you move on to the next piling. This rod right here, Vic's got a little clip piltered on it, just cast it way out, hoping to pick up a mutton, maybe a zero mackerel, maybe a yellow jack, could be anything really. A little live piltered with light leader, anything's gonna eat it. For him right here, Vic, did you cast out a pinfish on this one? No, piltered. You put, so you cast it out a piltered, you can get it a little bit further with this rod, so he's out way by the power lines with this one. Who knows, maybe a mackerel, maybe a mutton, maybe a, maybe a marlin one we are fishing a little live pilchard on bottom light leader 20 pound leader something like that this was my mutton catcher last week i caught or last trip i caught like a 21 inch mutton on this light little rod caught a permit on this rod before honestly i swear the light rods always get bit much better than the heavy rods do and then the last one on our spread right now we are rocking another grouper bait. So we kind of got our grouper baits on the outside, sitting straight down on a piling, hoping that a black grouper or something like that swims by and just is a little bit hungry for some pinfish. So showing you guys kind of the smorgasbord of baits, the bait buffet that we have. Fingers crossed, hoping this tide change is going to be good. A little bit unorthodox, but to kind of bring this whole trip together, I'm going to take you guys back to yesterday when we were using a bunch of live shrimp on another bridge to catch a little bit of everything. Just smoked me a little yellowtail guy. That is species number two on the shrimp. He ate with the jig head. I was actually trying to catch a parrot fish, but this guy ate it. Cute little guy. Whoa. Oh. And there is the mangrove snapper. That's two. God, that thought that guy's fat. He has just been eating chum. Straight up eating chum. Meh. <laughs> Ooh, a little pulling back action. Ten inchers, boy. Yo. Another little baby yellowtail. Dude, they're all yellow jacks. I'm eating ah. one of them. 100% all yellow jacks. Eat it. Eat yeah. It, dude, drop the shrimp and jig head. Come on, eat it. Oh, this mangrove just doomed me. And, 
and we're hooked up Woo! together. Where is he? Right there in the shadow line. Seen him. My favorite fish to catch in the Florida Keys, right here. I mean, these are the size of the ones they were catching at Long Beach. Yep. Dude, on the Vanford in the Cloud Nine. On the Vanford. Woohoo! What do you need, shrimp? Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, they love shrimp. So we got a whole school of these guys, some pilchards, sitting under, under the bridge right here. And you're going to try and take advantage of it, catch as many as we can, keep them live. Fix bringing the bucket right now. But I'm just going to try and catch a bunch of them. Last time I was here in the Keys, caught a nice like 21 inch mutton snapper on a pilcher that I caught off the bridge. So catch a couple of these, not too many, keep them live, put them they're in the bucket. Size, they're not forced, yeah. but they're good. No, they're perfect. Is this Alex's bucket? Yeah, I just put his shrimp in our bucket. Sweet. For some reason to a fisherman, pilchards smell good. They smell, it's like a, they smell soapy. It's, they smell clean. Of all the big fish, they just smell You know, good. Vic's been saying that for years. Uh, and I've never noticed it myself. Until so right you say now. now you say fishermen think they smell good? I don't know, man. Not in this, maybe not me. Maybe it's just I you. I think they smell wonderful. <laughs> I really do. Land sharks you're think just, they smell great. You're just not a bait guy at heart. <laughs> you truly are a big you're bait guy. A big, big Dude, look at look at all these baits I'm catching. They're gonna bleed. Let's not put them in. It's not bleeding. All right. But what we got? Haven't done much all day. We got something, Vic. We got something, man. Got a little, little scream in action. Some light leader. Some light filter to Vic and I caught at the last bridge. This feels jack like. Feels jack like? Possible. What do we got? Oh, we got a little button action. Short baton. Something just ripping and that was way far away. That's the first mutton on the trip. Man, we didn't have much mutton, many muttons at all. It's encouraging, but these bite windows are so small, you only get a couple chances and that's it. Bite's over. Right now, this is, we're fighting the sun. We're about to be fishing in the dark. Whoa! What do you think that is? Like 15 and a half, 16? Yeah. Close. Would have been legal a couple years ago. Ooh. All right, here we go, bud. Woo! That thing was sick. Little pilchard right here on a little circle hook, some white leader. I'm gonna send him out. I'm gonna try and pick an eddy. So I'm gonna try and pick an area where there's not as much current, but I'm next to a lot of current. Cast him out here. One of them guys, that seems like a pretty good spot. And I just reel it till it's kind of tight. And then I loosen the drag cap, loosen up so I can set the rod down. If I didn't do this and the drag was still tight, fish bites, my rod's going shoop, out that way. So definitely loosen the drag. Screaming run for Ryan. Dude, just put this out. Pilchard? Just put out a little live pilchard. And man, that was in out two seconds. I was about to grab the camera, start talking through all the uh, rods and reels that we have out. What do we got, man? That was a typical mutton run right there. I hope so. He hasn't, I don't even know if he knows he's hooked yet. Come on, buddy. Beautiful sunrise, hanging out with the bro, screaming runs. That's a good way to start the morning. Heck yeah. We had coffee, but I think this got my uh, heart rate going a little bit more. That's, t actually that's very yellow jack like now. Yellow jack. Yeah. Nice yellow jack. Oh no, it's a half. Oh, it's a zero. Yeah. Right? I don't know if we should net it. We could net it. Can you walk it this way? Yeah. Good. The big thing that I'm trying not to do is not let his head come out of the water. I'm trying not to let his head shake because I just got monofilament leader, or fluorocarbon leader. And if his head comes out and starts shaking, he might cut me off. Hold on. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. Uh -oh. 
that. Do you need to go over me? No. He's coming right back. In the net. Nice. Great way to start the morning. Great way. Dude, that's a big stuff. zero. Dude, look at that. Yeah, that's a chunker. Look at that, man. I have that's probably my biggest zero mackerel. So I'll show you guys in a sec kind of the differences between zero, Spanish, and king mackerel. But whew. You gonna pull out a king mackerel and Spanish mackerel out of your pocket? Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I got a couple on standby, ready to go for you guys. Walk this guy. That's a dude. That's his big. I know. It's like six pounds. It's stud. Look at him hook perfectly. You got lucky there, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I thought he was gonna cut me off for sure. Twenty-five pound fluorocarbon leader. This thing was ripping. Look at those teeth. Whoa! Almost got me. If those if those do touch you, they're gonna get you good. They'll cut you open, and they got like some slime on their teeth that uh, doesn't allow your blood to uh, what's it called? Clot okay. very well. Oh, buddy, come here. Let me show you guys to YouTube. Oh, buddy, nice zero mackerel. These actually. Correct me if I'm wrong, are a little bit better eating than Spanish and Kings. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, you know, I don't know why that is, but look at that straight line down the side of the zero, and that's the dead giveaway. See that lateral line? Little orangish yellow color. Dead giveaway for zero mackerel, which you find in the Keys a lot more. Further north you go, you start to find more Spanish. But that's a stud. Definitely my biggest zero ever. Great way to start the morning. You know, I don't know if I showed it in this video at all, but that's a stud grouper that you caught, isn't it? On the bridge. Dude, that was like a 27 inch black grouper that you caught on the bridge. He's chunky too, look at him. He's got a nice belly on him. He's Dude. full. I bet cool. you he's got some interesting stuff in his stomach. It's gonna be delicious. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the filet table. Morning was kind of slow after this Sphero mackerel. So we decided to kind of get back here and make the most out of the afternoon and catch some fish. So I'm just gonna work my way back on this here Ciro mackerel. And I couldn't tell you the last time I ate a Ciro mackerel. It's probably been a couple years. And I don't even know if I was the one to prepare it, but this guy should be delicious. I'm gonna be whipping it up with your favorite Chef Shark who's behind the camera right now. So I think that should be a, a good time and we'll see what we're gonna do. I'm still a little bit unsure. There is our zero mackerel filet. I'm gonna dab off a little bit of that blood and everything like this, but this, it's like a little bit softer version of a wahoo. It's kind of like what the meat's looking like to me. So maybe we'll do something sushi related, but I'll see you guys in the kitchen. I see a very excited chef shark in his natural environment. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I've never had zero mackerel as sushi or sashimi, but it looks good. It's got like, just the right amount of oil. It's a little on the soft side, like I was telling Ryan. This is definitely a fish you would not want to make this style dish no more than like two days after you have it in the fridge. Cause it's just gonna start to break down. It's a really soft textured fish, but a lot of flavor. So gonna do this one a little bit differently. Have a little bit more fun with it. Guest chef, Chef Shark, because he always gives me pointers. So why not have him behind the camera too? Vic's doing a catch and cook with that giant black grouper that he caught. So we're gonna cook up the cook up, I guess isn't the best word, but we're gonna make a little sashimi platter with the Ciro mackerel, which I think is gonna be delicious. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a little sashimi. So we're just gonna cut down the length of the fish. I don't know, what's, what's the diameter on that? Like half an inch? Yeah, little half inch pieces. Half inch pieces. And I bet you some of you guys at home that watch Ryan's videos are like, Ciro, mackerel sushi, really? You could honestly make sushi out of any fish. 
You could eat any fish raw, really, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's just some are better than others, but... We don't have the filet table a lot of the yeah. time. With tuna, especially, like filet and a tuna, a lot of the time I'll just like grab a piece and just like eat it right there. It's like delicious. The, yeah, it's the best way to do it. You can do it with bonita too, because that's like the only time to eat bonita is when they're really fresh. Yep. So let's just start to lay our zero mackerel pieces on here. You guys can see, like, the, it, it's got a good amount of fat. It you just can see the oil. glistens. Yeah. Glistens nicely. It's a Dexter sushi knife, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There were so many fancy ones when I lived in Japan that you could find. You sent us a knife when you were in Japan. I and did. It literally looks exactly like that one. Yeah. I sent my dad one, sharp. too. I, I sent them a knife, and I sent my dad a knife. And my dad, like a week later, sent me a picture of it. He's like, I broke the knife. And it was like a what? giant chip out of like the blade. Because you know how, uh, especially like a carbon steel is very, very thin. Like this is a, this Dexter's a little bit thicker, but it was like, mm. you know, you just had a chunk out of it. I don't know how he did it. So we got, we're going to make a little nigiri as well. So that's basically like your rice ball with your fish on top. And what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that the slice of the fish is gonna fit kind of perfectly on top of the rice. So I'm just gonna trim this up slightly because they would be a little bit too big to fit on the rice. And then I'm gonna kind of angle my knife, cut against the grain, just like this. And then you can just take your piece of fish and just put it on there. That is not the proper way to do it, but you know, you know, there's a proper way to do things and there's the fun way to do things. Yeah. And you know, a couple guys that are hungry, Brooke behind the camera is, uh, you know, pretty ready for some sushi. So I, I think it looks good. It's nowhere near the presentation value of like a sushi chef, but no. I mean, I think most people when they make sushi at home, it's not going to be the near the presentation value of that, but it's, I think it's still a fun thing to do. And the taste is going to be mm -hmm. the same, but also, mm -hmm. Some of you guys might not know some of Ryan's new subscribers, but this guy right here was in the Marines for four years, served our country, very mm -hmm. proud of him. And uh, let's get Ryan a like just for that. You know, oh, how many people man. can say they served their country? That's uh, about 1% of the country. 1%? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> okay, so, scrap like pieces. I was just gonna start eating them. Is that all right? You're gonna eat them, okay. it's not in that form. <laughs> I'm just going to start to cube up and make basically like a little poke style for the mackerel. Kind of like tuna. And that's another thing. People think like, oh, poke, it's got to be tuna. But not true at all. You can do this with any fish too. I think there was a bone. There was no bone there in there. There was a bone. There was no bone Some guy there. doesn't know how to flay his oh fish, I guess. Oh my gosh. He's trying to kill us all. Getting in there with tweezers. You know, the caveman didn't care if there was bones in their fish. They just ate the thing whole. Fun fact, I've actually heard that we've never lived in caves. That <laughs> we? Was, like, as in, like, humans never lived There's in caves. There's zero chance that's true. We might have used caves for shelter, but we did not live in caves. Using them for shelter and living? Like, how long did you have to use it for shelter? Like, two days? <laughs> Cut that out. Where else did <laughs> they live? <laughs> Outside the rock? Yeah, just, all, all Outside the cave? Is, all I'm saying is... <laughs> The people in Florida, is there any caves in Florida? No one lived in Florida, this thing was underwater. You ready? So, for the sashimi, this is what we're gonna do. Sesame oil. Just going down with a little bit, like that. A little bit of soy. This stuff is amazing. Right here. You use that in Cali, right? Oh my gosh, it's so good. Another YouTuber actually turned me on to it in California. This stuff is like, it looks like it'd be super spicy, but it's not. It's just this like flavorful, crunchy, garlicky. Is it pickle? Um, I don't think so. We're just gonna lay this right on, uh-oh. Lay it right on top of our sashimi. And then we can finish off with just a little raining of Scallion. Red and green. Christmas is coming. It's the holidays. I think have that you, looks very festive. Have you seen our house? Brooke did a great job Brooke, decorating. She did do a great job decorating. She always does a great job decorating. Do I have permission to put spicy mayo all over the whole thing? Okay. Who doesn't love a little spicy mayo? 
And that's just sriracha and mayo, isn't this it? This is sriracha, mayo, sesame oil, and um, lime juice. Dang. It's amazing. Yeah. It looks so much fancier than it is. So I just ate one of these jalapenos, and they're uh, potent. Pre pretty spicy. So uh, we'll go seedless on these. But man, we're just gonna, I'm thinking just half. I think you're just being maybe, a little baby maybe gringo. Maybe a couple. Little baby gringo. Okay, uh, uh, enough with all the gringo comments today. Um, I got a tan. You're looking red, not tan. Me? Yes. How dare you? I look amazing in this Navalis apparel shirt, yeah. which you can save 20% off if you're interested. They're super comfortable. By far the most comfortable fishing shirts I've ever worn. What's the girls. The Ryan 20. It's in the description. Thanks. You know, I was actually gonna make all this. I was just about to say that. So <laughs> Go ahead. Vic is it's a little bit sad. Um, we had a plan of going down to the Keys and catching a bunch of yellow jacks, using those yellow jacks to make a sashimi platter on the bridge, a video for Vic's channel. Well, we didn't catch any yellow jacks. And to make matters worse, after we left the Keys, we started getting pictures of another guy that was fishing. Colorful. Dude, he was fishing, what, a like, hundred feet from us? Yeah. Like, that's just the way it it's goes. It's just bad luck. I mean, or we just aren't good at fishing. I think there's a little combination. I'll go with I'll go with the bad luck. <laughs> All right, spicy mayo. Soy. Oh, it's good. Oh, it will be good. Scallion. And then, ideally you'd want like avocado or a cucumber in here, but we don't I have mean, that. Poke so. bowl by definition is whatever the heck you want, Yeah, right? Yeah. But you want some texture, you want some crunch and some fresh veggie, veggie in there, you know? So like cucumber would be good. Avocado. Mm -hmm. Then we'll also do a little bit of sesame oil. I can tell right now that this is gonna need more spicy mayo and more soy. Knowing what I know now and eating both fish, I would pick this over Wahoo. Dude. It's got more flavor, it's got a better texture, it's got more oil content, and you can catch it off a bridge. So all in all, a winner, in my opinion. Dude, I think it's delicious. Mm-hmm. You got anything to say? I think we all agreed that this was the best because Dude, the two- that was the, delicious. The two things with rice, we, I, I brought this rice, which was cooked 48 hours ago. So it's not fresh anymore. So what are you gonna do? But that was delicious. Yes, the crunchy garlic on top of this, um, mackerel was so amazing. This was a very, very delicious dish. And I just ate the fish plain off of the um, nigiri. And just like plain by itself was really, really good. And almost melted in your mouth like a top notch, like high class fish. So it was really good. Wow, so, I dig it. I good dig job, it. boys. Thank you. It was delicious. Thank you for your help. What did you think about Dude, it? Dude, I loved it. I loved every second of it, but I also love sushi. And, uh, you know, hanging out with friends, making sushi, drinking a beer. What's better? Nothing's better than that. Nothing. So, wasn't the best fishing day in the world, but we caught some fish. Got a solid trip in. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate you all, as always. And I'll see you in that next video. Peace. Bye.